Thank you very much. Um, well, we have three interesting presentations and that in many ways reflects the puzzles and challenges that African countries face to do or to achieve the structural transformation that uh, they need. Uh, the presentations have emphasized the role of the infrastructure, human capital, and innovation as the, one of the primary issues that these countries face. And uh, perhaps uh, we can open the session for questions and answers. So we can take four questions in, the, in a row and then uh, ask our presenters to answer the questions. So we can take four questions. So who would like to ask? Anyone? Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Uh, thanks. So, um, I have a question to to Anna Moreno in the first uh, first paper. So um, you started out with arguing about these export processing zones, right? And then um, uh, then you you show these coefficients of variation that you see this uh, drop in the coefficient of variation for wage employment but an increase in the coefficient for for the non-wage employment yeah. so the non-wage employment became more dispersed uh, 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 across country uh, across the country so uh, to me, it's not entirely clear how this relates to your analysis of export processing zones. So do you have something different there in mind with, you, with, your, with your analysis? So perhaps you could elaborate, elaborate a little bit on this. Um. Thank Did you. We have uh, another, uh, can we just take four? Um, another question was around here. Um, hello, my name is Nadia. I'm from uh, Italy and a PhD intern here. Um, thank you for the presentations. I wanted to ask something real quick. I, I don't remember exactly who presented the data on the World Economic Forum. Was that? Okay. I was just a very fast question on whether the people that were interviewed there uh, are people that work in Africa or not. And uh, then a question that um, maybe should be posed to the general public of the conference at the end, but I was wondering regarding the last presentation, how do you feel and think about the widespread phenomenon of land grabbing, which hasn't been touched at all during the conference so far? And which impact does it have on the agribusiness and on other elements that are important. Any other question? Yeah, please. Matthew, yes. Um, I have two questions for Ademola. The first one being, has your group or any group identified specific horticultural products that specific countries can develop and then the second question would be maybe your thoughts on some diversion of resources away from catering to local markets which is food security issue versus developing agribusiness which essentially caters to foreign markets which really is not solving food security issue Maybe the last question? Yes, at the end of the corridor. It's okay, I don't need it. I would like to ask the last presenter about the developing the agribusiness, where I have done research where I look at the trade in inputs for agriculture. And, and uh, Africa has the lowest input for agriculture. And, uh, and uh, the green revolution is due to the inputs into agriculture. So if you have, you increase the inputs, you will have a lot more production and productivity. And not only innovation, but how about using more inputs? Thank you. So, shall we start from, from the corner? Yes, thank you. Uh, to answer your question, uh, what I had in mind is kind of Okay, translating the Chinese model to Africa. So you would have these export processing zones as the catalyzers for agglomeration, for the agglomeration. So this is the idea that they're bringing to Africa. 
obviously directly it applies more to coastal uh, countries, uh, in my case, uh, Senegal, Guinea, and Tanzania. Uh, but I think also to the uh, non-coastal countries through regional integration. Um, so that's why uh, I had this as just as a reference point uh, for the analysis, yeah. Um, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, with regards to the, the uh, lander gap, uh, issue in Africa, obviously that's been is, uh, a big problem, um, particularly uh, with regards to um, agribusiness. Um, I mean, based on my experience in uh, uh, pineapple industry, so there was quite a lot of problem with land being taken away from small holders, and uh, and this is largely controlled by the chiefs, and the the regulation of the land or land administration does not take into full consideration the small order as to how they could benefit. So that's just one of the problem, basically. I think the, the next question I have is uh, the specific, do you have any specific uh, horticultural product? To be honest, I don't have one. I mean, obviously, Africa have to try different product that they could benefit from. And of course, that links to the next question, um, which is, uh, the lowest input in agricultural production. Of course, the, 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 the low productivity has been as a result of uh, lowest input in agricultural production too. Africa is gonna to have to you know, increase the input in terms of uh, fertilizer application, introduction of new technologies. It doesn't necessarily have to be biotechnology. There are other technologies such as ICT that Africa could benefit from in, in terms of improving their crop productivity. And if I may get the, someone actually mentioned something with regards to food security and agribusiness. Could you please uh, ask that question again? I appreciate that. It was her in front. Yeah. Um, no, I, I was just curious on your thoughts of, because essentially if you're, doing say pineapple, this is a cash crop, right? So there may be some diversion of resources away from say production of basic commodities, like rice, uh, wheat, towards more uh, market, foreign market oriented products. So do you see this as sort of problematic if one were to expand agribusiness and make it the central point of some country's development. I mean, if I if if I may uh, answer your question, uh, I think if everything boils down to the fact that African government have to get the policy right, and once they get the policy right, it will target the crop that can actually benefit farmers, small holders, because there are loads of you know, crops that smallholders are actually, you know, uh, cultivating in Africa, they're gonna have to work with smallholders, and that's one of the problem. If you don't have to identify their problem, it's gonna be very difficult as to how you're gonna help them and how they can benefit from agribusiness. So they have to carry them along when it comes to what they're gonna prioritize. That's, that's what I can say, to be honest. And based on that, I mean, give an example of uh, Penapu is working, uh, more or less working in, in Ghana, it's working in Ivory Coast. <coughs> they just need to step up the innovation program, which is fundamental to the growth of this uh, agribusiness. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the, Nadia's question was very simple. Um, it's um, generally the, to do the global competitiveness report, they ask people in your country, is this thing working or not working? What do you see as the major constraint uh, to do in business or to, so it is, yeah, it's lots of local people. Now that doesn't mean that foreigners don't answer because if you have multinationals in the country working there, that's their country of work. So, but, do you, but they're there, they're in the countries. They're either local or operating there, yeah. Um, I think your question, I didn't get your name, sorry, but I think your question is very relevant. Um, uh, the Gates Foundation gives grants for, huge grants, for uh, working on, you know, that now they are doing the poverty reduction thing, but they are focused a lot on agriculture. 
And one of the issues is to look, it's not big farms for export, it's really livelihood of the small farmers. And in that regard, this idea of food security is extremely important. I know that in Asia it's big. In China, food security is like number one thing. Um, and so it is very important. And I really wish that uh, we have more research, uh, because I don't know of any papers that really looked at this. What she said is a nice uh, research topic to see if the country, what is, how can you strike a balance between really starting to export all these fancy stuff, nice things that go to Europe and the US and mostly Europe, um, and feeding the people who really need to be fed in rural areas. It's an ex excellent question. Thanks. Um, maybe follow-ups, questions. Um, yes, at the end of the, the back of the room. Um, my name's Victoria. I'm from the Africa All Party Group in the UK Parliament. Um, a couple of questions for Adam Muller. Um, one is, I take your point about needing to increase the amount of knowledge that's feeding into agriculture. But I wonder to what extent it's about communication of that knowledge rather than necessarily um, creating new knowledge. Um, did you look particularly in the example of the pineapples at, for example, the role of extension agencies or even the role that academics are playing in reaching out to the um, agricultural community? Um, and the second point was, you've you focus quite um, narrowly on technological fixes, and I'd wonder if you had investigated the role of more local forms of knowledge. Yeah. I think, thank uh, you. Can, can we just take another, maybe a few questions? Um, uh, no? Okay, so, <laughs> and then, <laughs> sorry. Right. Um, I think I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with the um, the role of uh, uh, local knowledge in in pineapple production. Obviously, that's very very important. I agree with you on that basis. And of course, uh, this thing has to be done by the government. So there are a lot of things government have to put into consideration, including getting the the local farmers involved in agri business development is very vital. With regards to the role of uh, academic. To be honest, I've not looked at that in terms of whether they play a fantastic role in development of uh, a pinnacle industry in, in, uh, in Ghana and Ivory Coast. I think it's worth looking at. That's, that's good. And then uh, with regards to creation of knowledge, of course, government needs to create a lot of awareness in terms of uh, introducing new technology. That's very important. And, and uh, this this can only be done by you know, coming up with the right policy in Africa. And, and not only coming up with the right policy, it has to be implemented. That's what I actually em emphasize. While you are funding a program, it has to be implemented. Most of the policy look quite clean on the paper in Africa. But to implement it, that's one of the problems, to be honest. Thank you. Mm. Well, it seems like nobody else has questions. So, oh, oh sorry. Yes, great. Um, thank you uh, for the contribution. I mean, the expose on the issue of agri business in Africa. And my question is directed to you. You spoke of, of funding. I don't know if someone asked on that already. Um, funding, and my question is from where? Is it from international donors or from the government or from the private sector? And also, um, I would like to highlight on the case of my country, Cameroon where there is currently an issue on oil palm plantation, where it is a very critical case where um, the investors from the US are not finding it quite easy with uh, the local population and the government as well, with respect to the size, and with um, environmental NGOs who are also taking into consideration the, the cost on the environment so um, with respect to some of these challenges, um, what are your, 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 your opinions on investing in Africa to eval uh, eradicate food security in some of these challenging terrains like tropical, subtropical Africa? Thank you. Well, maybe we are lucky to have uh, any other question before we proceed. No? 
Right. Okay. What? I think funding is, is, is very important. So how would that happen? Well, based on my experience, basically, donors have been coming to help in terms of improving the uh, agribusiness. Uh, I've come across the case of Big Gate working with the World Bank to facilitate that in, in Ghana. But one of the problems I found out in the literature is lack of continuity amper this program. They probably funded it for a couple of years, and after that, it's, it's not sustainable for some reason. Uh, perhaps they're not making enough profit, but there is no literature that has, uh, that has that actually assess that impact. Then it's worth looking at as well. So lack of the continuity of the program, either on the part of the government or the donor, is one of the one of the problem. So with regards to oil plantation and and I think the government have to get it right right from the beginning. They have to specifically highlight what they want when it comes to, you know, investing or in, inviting the the investor into the country. I think, uh, and they have to take uh, uh, the plight of the small order into consideration, which is often been neglected. So that's one of the problems. So you have to carry. It, it's it can't always be from you know uh, top down approach. It's got to be bottom up. That's that's what I can say to be honest. Um, eradicating food security in Africa, wow, it's huge. I mean, it's it's difficult. Um, obviously, it can be done, and government have have to show a lot of interest because, as far as I'm concerned, it's just that the whole thing is being done by donors, being done by FAO and other international organization. They've got it take a proactive approach towards solving food security problem rather than relying on those people from outside. Otherwise, these guys who are coming from outside, they have their own agenda, and it might not suit their own purpose, to be honest. Thank you. Is there any reaction? <laughs> no? Right, so perhaps uh, it seems like we, we are Finishing ahead, so thank you very much. Ah, okay, finally, okay. One question, yes. Just ask a quick question. Yeah, please. Uh, to Anna, I think the first presenter. Uh, just a clarification. So when you are calculating uh, a coefficient of variation to to uh, to measure your variation, uh, you are doing it on a on a dummy type variable, right? On a zero one variable. Uh, would that no, be a problem? The, the levels of employment by subnational units. So I take each country, then uh, observation per subnational unit, and is the absolute values of wage or non wage employment. So is it a zero one type? No, 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 just the value. The ah, okay. Value. And then with that, I calculate the mean and the standard deviation. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, and that gives me the value of the indicator. Ah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. So finally, no more questions? No? Well, thank you very much for the presenters and uh